One mother and a toddler in a stroller walk into the school for the blind. They meet the principal, Ryan Green. Meet Ryan Green. Ryan. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Ryan. Nice you. I'm the director of campus programs here at USB. And this must be Sloan. This is Sloan. Hi. Say hi, Ryan. How are Say you? Hi. Hi. Here at the Utah School for the Blind, we have three campuses. We have one located in Ogden, one in Salt Lake, and one in Springville. Transportation is provided for our students to live within 70 minutes of our campuses. And so they're picked up in the morning by our, by our Wasatch Transportation's drivers and they're dropped off in the afternoons. Transportation vans are parked outside of the school and students get onto and off of those vans as they're transported from home to school and back again. Lauren Rich is the assistant principal. On all three campuses, we have a lot of preschool classrooms, which is great. We love to have our students come young, do preschool with us, and see them be successful in other educational environments. Um, we also have elementary programs on all three of our campuses. Our Ogden campus houses our Bridges, Bridges program, which is our high school, and Bridges to Community Readiness program for older students. Margaret is with the Parent Infant Program and works with babies up to age three. Um, honestly, some families are really nervous and um, a little apprehensive about sending their baby to preschool. They sometimes feel like they're too young, um, but there are some families that are really excited, and it's really fun to talk with them about um, preschool options and to get them excited for a new um, setting. It's really good for the parents to see the different classrooms, whether it's the district preschool or the preschool at the School for the Blind, um, and to compare and contrast them and to see how the teachers interact. Teacher Sandra Pepin. Well, my name is Sandra Pepin and I work for Utah Schools for the Blind. I've worked in other school settings. The things that I find that are different here at the School for the Blind is just the layout of the school. So our sensory gardens are one of our most frequented areas on our campus. They're designed for students who vision is not an accessible format for them. So they've got tactile playground items, auditory things that they can make music or sound. We've tried to make sure that there are plants there that smell good or have different feelings. So that way students can um, engage in out outdoor play with each other um, and on our campuses in a way that's accessible for them. Does it spin? You ready? Whee! Whoa! They have high contrast um, doors and um, they have tactile um, walls that the kids can feel and touch. Um, there's a lot of technology that we use. We have smart boards in every classroom. We have speakers that enhance our voice so that our voices come out clear to the students. Um, we just um, teach with the expanded core curriculum. So the expanded core curriculum are nine areas that students with visual impairment need to work on and learn in order to access the core curriculum and access the world around them. On our School for the Blind campuses, our students get the expanded core curriculum all day long. In other schools, they might get a little bit here and there from their TBI, but here in the School for the Blind, they're able to get all nine areas every day in their learning. In your school district, you might your student might be taught by a special education teacher, their general education teacher, and then have an itinerant teacher of the visually impaired, which means that teacher would come in and help instruct in the classroom or pull, pull your child out um, for a number of minutes and then push them back into the classroom versus here their whole day is run by teachers of the visually impaired. So students can receive intensive vision services at their district or local school. One of the biggest differences between that and our program is that they're receiving the expanded core curriculum or the ECC throughout their day. It's both embedded and taught really explicitly. So what that looks like is um, this year we've started and titled it our ECC immersion model and it's new to us but it is very similar to something we've been doing in the past um, where every subject of the student's day has expanded core in it. The teacher is constantly teaching that um, along with explicit vision skills like braille or like tactile differentiation or things that students need to be leaving that, learning that would be on their IEP goals. So parents are very much a part of our team here at School for the Blind. 
they're part of our IEP team. Susan Patton, the superintendent at the Utah School for the Blind. For parents, it's important to understand the IEP process and how a placement decision is made. At USDB, we look at how intensive the vision needs are. And if the vision is the primary educational need, and that's very important to remember, that vision has to be the primary educational need. Now that doesn't mean that the child might, ha might not have multiple disabilities or vision might be the only need, it's just the primary educational need. The Individual with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, requires the IEP team to look at what's called the least restrictive environment. That typically is a district placement. And we have to look at can the student's vision needs be met in a district placement with the support of a teacher of the visually impaired. If they can't be met, met in that environment, then a Utah School for the Blind placement may be appropriate. When we do receive students and we understand that their primary educational need right now is vision services, we also like to create an entrance and an exit plan for our students. So we're looking forward to the future to understand with families what does it look like when the student is ready to leave our nest per se and go back to an itinerant model. This individualized education plan is different for each of the students and I've had parents tear up as they look at this team even me talking about it makes me feel a little emotional that is for their child and suddenly the parent does not feel alone in helping their child it takes a village and it it's just you know individualized it's not like a stamp that this is what we do it's different if you look at our IEPs every single one of those individualized education plans are different